Welcome back. I'm Tom Hewitt, and this is News 13's Eye on the Election. I'm sitting here with Bob Miller, who's running for House District 2. And Bob, you are, are an incumbent in a district that no longer exists, uh, and so is your opponent, uh, Tammy Wilson. Right. And uh, so I'm gonna, going to assume that our viewers know you and she pretty well, uh, but why would you uh, make the case that you will be a better, b better served to continue in, in state office than she? Well, I think there's a very clear distinction between uh, the stances that Tammy and I both take. Um, one of the most important ones, of course, has to do with our energy costs here in the interior. Now, there was a very good plan that came out from the Senate last year, wherein uh, most of us that live here right now would be benefiting from having something called an energy dividend. Be good for 250 gallons of fuel. It came out of the Senate, it was passed by the Senate, but then it got held up in the House and went nowhere, so right now we're not getting that benefit. That's one of the things I supported, my party supported, and the other side did not. So there's a real clear distinction right there. Also, the other very clear distinction is that uh, Ms. Wilson and her party voted to give away $20 billion over the next 10 years by changing our tax uh, structure for the oil companies up on the North Slope uh, without demanding a business case, without demanding that there be guarantees or, or a contract or goals or ratios or, or something from the other side that says this is exactly what we expect from you, this is what we're going to get. It's just an open-handed giveaway. So I find that that will be the, the real clear distinction between our two sets of uh, reasons that we're running. Uh, Mayor Luke Hopkins of the borough here has some momentum behind his project, a natu natural gas utility run by the borough that would kind of serve to organize uh, the push for natural gas uh, to Fairbanks. But the, uh, the idea behind it is that it would require uh, at least some state help, and uh, either in the form of helping uh, funds to help build a liquefaction plant on the North Slope or mm -hmm. uh, help with uh, the distribution system in Fairbanks or the trucks or, or in some fashion. I, is the mayor's plan something that you think that uh, the state should get behind? And if so, how would you uh, get le other legislators on board from areas that might not be directly benefited by the plan? Well, very much uh, the, the, the principle that, I've, that I understand so far, and of course in politics the devil is always in the details, so there are a lot of those to look over. But in principle, I like the idea very much. I go to a meeting a lot of Tuesday mornings at uh, the Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation, FEDCO for short, and most of the time we're in there discussing natural gas. How do we get it to Fairbanks? But what I always find very telling is that there's a poster on the wall behind us that tells Fairbanks to get up, get up, get ready, gear up, you know, natural gas is going to be here any minute now, and it's dated 1958. So we've been waiting a very long time for private industry to do this for us. I'm of the opinion that private industry isn't going to do it. There's, there's not enough profit, that we don't have enough population to support all of this. We're going to have to do it for ourselves. That being said, at the moment, the state of Alaska is flush. We're putting money into a savings account over the last six years. I think we've stashed away somewhere, depending on how you count it day to day, anywhere from 14 to $20 billion. Now this, of course, is, is not saying, oh, let's just go on a spending spree, but we do want to invest. We do want to invest our money wisely for those things that someday when, you know, revenues do run short, well, these things will all be done. They'll already be in place. They're already paid for. And they're producing benefits for the people and the businesses here in the Alaskan interior and, and the rest of Alaska, as a matter of fact. So as far as trying to, to get uh, support for this, I would start with our interior delegation, which is pretty well unified in understanding our problems here with energy costs. Uh, and of course, the thing that I've been challenging everybody, especially people at home, we all have friends, neighbors, and people we do business with in Anchorage. Anytime you're talking to those folks, you need to ask them the question. If Fairbanks collapses, What's it going to do to your business in Anchorage? What does it do when you are no longer selling tires or selling cars or selling widgets or selling food or whatever it is you sell that comes through Anchorage? What is the result? I'll bet you that their businesses down there are mostly 20 and 30 percent us. We have to get the people in Anchorage to start talking about Fairbanks as if it's an integral part of their economy as well, because it is. We have to make them understand that. So we'll be looking for support on all of those avenues.
Last year, Governor Parnell made a point of not increasing the base student allocation for K-12 school funding. And uh, he said that he wanted to see performance guarantees, guarantees of performance increases before he would increase funding per student. And uh, what's your position on, on education funding and also the position that he took that uh, there should be concrete guarantees that performance will improve before funding increases? I could talk about that for a very long time. Uh, one of the things I would point out is that every country on this planet, any place you go where you have a high standard of living, you'll find a couple of things. You'll find terrific infrastructure, good roads, good telecommunications, uh, television, radio, you will find uh, universities, you'll find well-funded schools, and you find a very well-educated population. These conditions always produce a good economy, and it doesn't matter whether or not they have a whole lot of natural resources, they come up with other ways of generating their, their uh, economy to, to, to make it work. So as far as not fully funding and not forward funding our education, I'm, I'm in absolute opposition with the governor's position. The idea that he's going to demand accountability from the education system first flies in the face of what we just talked about, willing to give away $20 billion of our revenue to oil companies with no guarantees and no accountability. Uh, how, do you make that, how do you make that argument? We did manage to get some monies back into education, but it's very telling. I saw a, a statistical chart uh, maybe two weeks ago, and it showed that of all the states right now, Alaska is number one in being behind where it should be just to have its base student allocation, that's the amount of money we put for, uh, forward per student, uh, we're about $530 behind just keeping up with inflation and, as we know, our energy costs. And guess who's number one in being ahead? North Dakota. Now, what does this tell you? What does it communicate to our children? What does it communicate to our citizens and people to think about coming up here, whether to invest in a business or just to live here? when we are saying we don't value education as much as some other places. It's, there's a lot of communication that goes on with that. We have got to put more eff effort into that. If you take 20 kids from, from Sweden or Finland or uh, Norway or Japan, any of these places, and you ask them, how many of you kids would like to grow up to be teachers? About 75% of their hands go up in the air because it's a well-respected, well-paid, and very well-trained force of people they have over there. We've somehow pulled away from this. We don't seem to think that education has that much value. And it comes down to one of those expressions from, uh, I believe it was Oscar Wilde, who said, we've arrived at a place where we know the cost of everything, but we understand the value of nothing. I think that's about all the time we have, but thanks for coming in, Bob. My pleasure, sir. And for the rest of you, don't go away just yet. We've got Jamie Schwartzwald coming up next with sports.